Yes, I I know the sound is like very 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 noisy, because it, actually you listen the sound actually is from my I listen the sound is like straight away from my ear so it's like terrible. Anyways, yeah, let's come to the first question. I hope the sound is like not so frequent. Then at least we can discuss something. Yeah, so this is some formula for paper two. I I think all of you have no problem about the formula. Let's have a look on the first question. Yeah, where is the first question? All right, this is the first question. What's in this question? Simultaneous equation. I I I think none of you should have the issue on simultaneous equation, right? Simultaneous equation is like so simple. All of you cannot see me, or only that the one wa cannot see me. Okay, so for one one, may maybe you're trying to like log in again. You're trying to like close and trying to log in again. Yeah. Right. So the first question is simultaneous equation. So simultaneous equation is very simple. So we have to make one of it as a subject. So normally I will, I will like recommend you to make y as a subject because if you make x as a subject, actually this one is a fraction. And a lot of students will make mistake in fraction. So I will make y as a subject and then I'm going to like do it quite fast. So basically it's just like uh, y will equal to uh, 2x minus 1. Then I call this one 1 and I call this one 2. Of course what we do is substitute 1 into 2. Sub 1 into 2. Then we do the substitution thing. Yeah, we have so limited space, so I'm going to write somewhere around here. So it will be 4x squared plus 3y squared. My y will be 2x minus 1. Alright, square minus 2xy, 2x minus 1, and then will equal to 7. Alright, so this one, we just expand it. We got 4x squared plus 3. 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 and then this one is just plus 4x squared and minus 4x squared I'm sorry minus 4x squared plus 2x equals to 7 alright so yeah we just solve this one very fast because it's like so simple so plus 12x squared minus 12x plus 3 minus 4x squared and then plus 2x equals to 7 and then 4x squared and 4x squared we can cancel and then and then what we have is this one and this one we got 12x squared and yes and then 12x and plus 2x cancel out we got negative 10x this one move over here will be minus 4 equals to 0 then we just factorize it Right, so the first question is like very simple, so I think all of you can do. So I'm going to skip the first question. And then after you got the x answer, just substitute both into the y. It's like very simple. Let me zoom in a little bit because I need more space for me to write. Okay, for number two. Okay. Number two, this is a log question. So we ask you to simplify. Simplify is very simple. First thing is we just check uh, is all all the base is the same or not. Okay, is all the base is the same? Then you can show we do, but this one is not because this is log four. So what we need to do is we have to change change this one to base two. But before I start to change, no, normally I will move the five, go up, become the power. So the first step is. I solve whatever number at the front first. So this one actually you can do something like this one become log four x square square multiple five you got ten. This one plus log two x power four. Then only I change base for this one. So I will got log two and then this is two x plus one and then minus when I change base I draw a line here I will write log two and log 2 and then this one will be just x power of 10 this one will be 4 then we plus log 2 x power of 4 right so we solve this part we know log 2 4 actually equals to 2 
So this one is like very simple. So I'm going to like erase this one, change this one to two, because log two four you will get two. I hope you at least understand why log two four four you will got two. Will log two four you will got log two? Two square. You move the power in front. Actually, you will got two. Log two two is one, so you got two over here, right? So if you understand, I'm going to move on. Then, yeah, what happened to this one? So we have to solve the fraction first. Because in this case, you cannot multiply two for everything. So what I can do is actually like separate this one. I separate this one into one over two multiple log two x power of ten, and then I can move my one over two. Go up, and multiple is ten. So actually, it's five. All right. So this one actually will give me log two x power five. All right. So the whole thing for this one actually is log two x power five. I hope you at least understand this one. Then I erase this one because I already solved for you. So we will got log two x power five. Then everything in the same base already. We can simplify it easily. By factorize out the log two, so if I factorize out the log two, what I will have is all the minus will become divide and plus will become multiple. So I will got this one two x plus one. The minus right minus mean divide, x power five. Plus mean multiple multiple x power four. Then we can actually simplify this one and this one. We left an x. So the answer after you simplify is just log two. Bracket two x plus one over. Ah,、uh, sorry, the bracket is for whole thing over x. Okay, yes, this is this is your final answer after you simplify. So some common mistake over here is a lot of student actually will expand this one into something like multiple. You have to remember in the world of the law, whenever you bracket plus or minus, you cannot expand it. So you must remember. So this this one log two two x plus one you actually you can't do anything for it, you only can like factorize out log two then you become like this pattern, right? So yeah, let me write my answer nicely because I'm going to use in the second part also. So therefore I will get log two bracket two x plus one over x. Alright, and then whenever you see the hangs, you know you have to use the answer in the first part to solve this part, and you realize this one. It's exactly same with the part A one, isn't it? So that means the whole thing over here equals to three. So you don't need to redo again because it only give you two mark, right? So you just straight away do it. So I will got log two, and then bracket two x plus one over x will equals to three. Then I move the log two over that over the other side. What what I will get? So my the other side actually will get two power of three. Okay, this is basic rule of of log. I hope you at least you understand this one. So this one will be two x plus one over x equals to two power of three, which is eight. Okay, let me just erase this one because I have no no place for me to write. Right. So then I'm going to like continue over here. So this is two x plus one over x will equals to eight. So therefore, two x plus one will equals to eight x. So therefore, six x will equals to one. X is just one over eight, one over six. Yes, solve it. Right. So of course you must understand why I move the log two to the other side. I will got two power of three. This is some basic rule about log. It's just like log a b equals to c, and then you will got b will equals to a power of c. Right. So it's very simple. When I move the log two to the, this side, two will become a number, and then three here will become the power. All、right, just remember this one. All right, let me move on to number three. All right, okay, num number three is quite simple. Okay, from number three over here, you can see actually it tell you is GP. So whenever I see GP, I at least I link to two thing is A is the first term, R is the ratio. All、right, in order to get R, I hope you understand. In order to get R is just the term two over term one. Or you can use term three over term two, mean the second term or over over first term or third term over the second term. Alright, so yes, this is some basic information about geometric progression. 
before I start to do the question, I actually will understand about this one. Mm. I will never get D in the geometric progression because that one is for arithmetic progression. Mm. All right, so over here, I give you the three term on the middle. And I ask you to, he says, and the sum of the first five term is S uh, is eight, four, seven. So you have to understand what is the meaning for sum of the first five term. Sum of the first five term mean S five equals to eight, four, seven. So sum of the first five term, this is something very important. You have to understand S5 is must sum, must sum from the first term. So it's from T1 plus until T5, you will got 8, 4, 7. This is some basic information. You have to understand about that. All right, so first thing is I'm trying to find common ratio. I'm trying to find R. So I know R, what I can do is, I, this is the first term, second term and third term, right? So what I can do is, okay, let me erase this one. Let me change some color. Okay, what, what I can do here will be, okay. I use the, this is first term, this is second term, this is third term, right? So second term over first term will equals to third term over second term. So we're going to solve this one. So I will got y square is like very huge number. Yeah, let me take my calculator. So much. Yes, I think they are doing renovation or something like that. Okay, let me like lower down a bit my the voice. Do you still feel the anchor is like so terrible? Okay, but at, at least you can hear my voice, right? So then I continue. This is five one zero three multiple five six seven. So basically, I will got the very huge number over here, 2893401, and then I'm trying to square root it. I can get y equals to 1701. A lot of students actually, yeah, they will stop here. They will think this one is a ratio. This one is not the ratio. Y actually is just a second term. All right, so after you got y, you just substitute in, and then, you, then only you find the ratio. So ratio is very simple. So we know R actually just take the second term divided by the first term. So I divided by five, six, seven, I will got three. So in this case, you will got three. All right, when you got three, something you must straight away link to your mind. This is GP. Because GP SN will have two different formula. One is when R is bigger than one, the other one will be R is less than one. This is what's so complicated about GP. So this is bigger than one, right? When R is bigger than one, the SN formula you can use is like A uh, will be R N minus one over R minus one. Okay, this is something you must very clear in mind because if R is less than one, you will, you will use a different formula for SN in geometric progression. In AP, yes, the R the SN only got one one method only. So, but in GP actually you have to decide. Which what's your values of R? Alright, so he asks you to find A. So he asks you to find A. Now we got S5 and we got R. R is 3. So we know actually we can use this formula to find the A. Okay, so Okay, I, I'm going to like simplify this one. We'll write my information on the top. R equals to 3. Okay, then I try to use this place. So my SN, what's my SN? My SN is 847 will equals to A. My Rn is 3 power of n. My n is what? S5, right? My n is 5. Minus 1 over my R is 3 minus 1. I just solve this equation, I can easily get the A. Alright, so just solve this one. So this one is 2. So 847 multiplied 2. Yeah, we will got 16694. One, or equals to a this is 3 power of 5 minus 1 3 power of 5 minus 1 
you actually you have got 242 then you just divide it by 242 you can get a so 1694 divided by answer you got a equals to 7 all right it means the first term is 7 all right then what he asks you to find the smallest values of n such that the n term is acid so you must understand what is the meaning for acid acid means bigger all right so he asks you to find the n term find the smallest values of n when the n term is bigger than 10,000 all right so first information is this is something like yes i want to find my tn actually bigger than 10,000 so in geometric progression whenever it asks you to find n term most of the time most of the time you have to use log all right remember most of the time you have to use log to solve it okay so what is the formula for tn for for geometric progression yeah i hope you actually can remember the formula for geometric progression so tn will equals to ar n minus one all right so over here i'm going to substitute the formula my a is seven my r is three and i do not know so it will bigger than ten thousand and then i add actually i add log for both sides all right so i add log for both sides but before that i move the seven first three n minus one will bigger than this number divided by seven okay so you you will get some other value okay let me continue here all right so yeah ten thousand over seven so three power of n minus one will equal ah uh, sorry not equal in this case it is like bigger will bigger than one I don't know uh, one four two eight point five seven maybe all right so I say you must use log so you add log for both sides okay LG stand for log 10 and uh, this is short, short form n minus 1 bigger than log 1428.57 and then the log actually tell us what log actually tell us whatever power we can move in front and become multiple correct or not so n minus 1 this is log 3 so we're bigger than log 1428.57 so what you want to do you want to find n it's very simple you just move the uh, log 3 to the other side so basically I will got n minus 1 will be bigger than this log 1428.57 divided by log 3 so I will say log answer divided by log 3 so basically i will got 6.612 maybe so i move the negative one so n actually is bigger than 7.612 then here you understand why he used the smallest value because what n is bigger than 7.6 something you can get the number is like very big can be n equals 100 because n equals 100 is still bigger than this one right so when i say smallest value mean you will get the closest one in this case n equals to 8 you cannot write n equals to 7 why because 7 is less than this number so this one is unacceptable unacceptable you can you cannot write 9 10 you cannot write 9 or 10 or 99 why because this one is bigger than this one because it asks you to find the smallest value so it's very simple you just find the nearest one which is a this is correct all this is wrong all right got the idea for this part this is one of the famous question in SPM all right if no problem I'm going to move on if you got if you got any problem just raise hand or just type on the chat room there all right this is what ask you to find mean so whenever you want to find mean you must know whether this is group this is group data or ungrouped data when you did you see any table this one is un, this one is actually ungrouped ungrouped data if ungrouped data what is the mean formula the mean actually will equals to sum of x over n sum of x means what this is x1 this is x2 this is x3 this is x4 this is x5 sum of x means all these number plus together and got x6 sorry yes means sum of x 
n is what n is like how many number you have here one two three four five six all right you must understand about this formula so i can find a mean easily just use my uh oh no he doesn't ask me to find mean he gave me the mean is seven mean is seven he asked me to find the values of y so i know i have to use the mean formula so basically mean formula is this one right so seven will equals to sum of x mean all the number plus together two plus y plus five plus two y plus one plus ten plus twelve will equals over uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Over 6 will equal to 7. Just solve this one, you can easily get y. So 42 will equal to 7, 8. 7, 8 will be 20, 30. 30 plus 3y. So basically, 3y will equal to 12. y will equal to 4. Simple. So you got y equals to 4 by just using the mean formula. Alright, because this is, you have to know mean actually you have two formula you check the formula list you, for group data and ungroup data ungroup data always you have the frequency one but no i mean the group data you always will have the frequency all right and variance okay what is the variance for ungroup data the variance will be sum of x square over n minus sum of x over n square which is some some textbook actually they write this one at mean square all right it's the same thing because this is a formula for mean all right so i just solve this one so if you if understand about this one so after you got y you must do something very important is you must substitute the y into your series of number here then at least you will get a be better idea all right so i'm going to use blue back so this is two so my y is four this is five this is nine this is 10, this is 12. All right, then I can use my variance formula. You can ask me to find variance. So the sum of x squared means what? All these numbers you have to square. So it's like two square, you have got four. Four square, you got 16. Five square, you have got 25. Nine square is 81. 10 square is 100. 12 square is 144. Over six, because you have six number over here, minus mean square your mean you just got it is seven square all right so you solve this one you can straight away get the variance formula and you straight away get the answer for variance what am i saying all right so i'm going to like delete this one yeah just to make it nicer so you just use a calculator it's very simple so 4 plus 16 plus 25 plus 81 plus 100 plus 144 where is my zero over here okay divide divided by six and then minus 49. So actually you have got 12.67. All right, this is answer for variance. Is if, if the question asks for standard deviation, what you need to do is just a square root the whole thing. All right, so far so good. All right, give me a few seconds. I on the icon, it's like so hot. All right, so I'm back. All right, so let me move on. So, so far, I guess you, you guys have no issue, right? Because this is like simple question. Am I doing paper two, right? Like not so hard one. Okay, so each number in the set, <coughs> sorry, is, is multiplied by three and then two is added to it. So something you must know this one very well, those for variance and standard deviation or range you only do multiple you ignore the add the plus and minus for it so for standard deviation okay of course i have to find a standard deviation first so st the old standard deviation is just like square root 12.67 so yes yeah, so i just like square root 12.67 then i actually we got some i actually we got 3.5559 maybe 3.559 so whenever they say multiple three and plus two, okay, for certain things for variance, for standard deviation, 
for range yeah i i think that's all you only do multiple you will never do plus and minus for it but for mean yes so what's your mean just now it's seven right so you just multiply by three and plus two so basically you have got like 23 yes this is your new mean all right but for standard deviation you only do multiple you ignore the plus two so i just use this number multiple three so I multiple three because it say multiple three so you have got 10.68 all right if you got divide three same thing you you just do the divide because what because you you can try to do the experiment like you all these numbers you plus two and then you calculate the va variance or standard deviation you will still get the same value because it won't affect unless you plus an extremely big value into it then maybe you will affect the the standard deviation or variance yes so you you can try to do the experiment by yourself mean you all these numbers you just plus two plus two or you can plus five or plus ten it doesn't matter when you plus ten like this one become 12 14 15 19 20 22 and then you use the standard deviation formula and then you find out you actually you will get back the same value 3.4 not same very close value 3.559 so means what you plus 10 actually you won't affect the values of the standard deviation but you multiple yes okay you multiple you actually you will affect on it all right so you must remember all this so all this number you just ignore plus or minus all right so just remember this one if he asks you to find a new set of value mean mean the he asks you to find a new value all right so it's simple so let's move on all right what is this this is geometric coordinate i guess all right so he say the skill drawing is not acceptable okay so now he give you a line a b he asks you to find the triangle a o b so basically here you must get one information o what is the coordinate for o will be zero zero all right so basically he asks you to find this area of this triangle a o b so now i want to find this area so what i will do is just use the area formula because it's very simple so area is just equals to one over two and then the coordinate i I will arrange according to what they want. A is what? Negative 3, 4. O is 0, 0. B is 6, negative 2. We must repeat the first one. Negative 3, 4. Alright, so then I just do the multiplication. So, first is what? You have to multiple this way. Alright, so I will have 0, 0, 24. Okay, minus... I multiply back this way. So negative three multiple negative two is just six. Zero, zero. Yeah, that's all. So it's just twelve over eighteen. So modulus mean inside here must be positive. So you got nine units square. So this one equal to nine units square. Alright, simple. Then the second one. Whenever you see ratio okay you see ratio you must use back the ratio formula what is the ratio formula w will be something like uh, let me erase this one i just feel like so messy okay the ratio formula is like m x1 plus n x2 over m plus n comma after x ready do y y1 plus n y2 over m plus n will equals to x y all right m and n over here is a ratio so this one might may be n and n okay remember n and n is a ratio all right so he asked you to solve this part so i going to like okay show you here so he says point c divide straight line a b internally means what c is on the middle if you externally c maybe outside here all right you must get the idea so AC is 3, CB is 2. So I roughly imagine C is somewhere here. Alright, so we do not know coordinate C. I could I put it X, Y. So the ratio here will be 3 and 2. So I'm going to start to do this part. I change color. So you must rem remember. Okay, I call this one M. And call this one N. 
So, n have to multiply the further x coordinate. n is multiply the further x coordinate, then plus together. Alright. So I have got three multiple six plus negative three multiple further. Uh, sorry, I have to use the ratio first, just not to confuse you. Alright, three multiple six and then two multiple negative three. Then two uh, multiple negative three. Over both ratio plus together is five. Comma, same happens to y. Three multiple the further one. So three have to multiple negative two plus two multiple the further one. Two multiple four. Divide by total ratio. Okay, just like this. Remember you three you cannot multiple with negative three. You must multiple the further one. Alright. So I just solved this one. This is eighteen. This one is just 18 minus 6 is 12. 12 over 5. This one is negative 6 plus 8. So it's 2 over 5. So this one will be coordinate C. So it's 12 over 5 and 2 over 5. That's all. Alright, so whenever you see ratio, must link to this formula. I'm going to call it ratio formula. Okay, and then must understand M and N is just a ratio. Alright, let me move on. What they want for the next part. Alright, this is locus. So here he said point P is moved such that the distance from A is twice the distance from B. So I know what? The distance from P to A will be double of distance from P to B. This is what I understand from the sentence itself. So whenever I ask you to find loss, locus, you must link to the distance formula. Locus is always need to link to the distance formula. Alright. And I hope you, you know about distance formula. If not, you can't get correct in this part. So over here, I just use the distance formula. So the distance formula is just square root for x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square all right this is distance formula so he said the okay p is something we do not know so i let p equals to xy all right so then i will start to i will start to do it all right but before i do it i just give you some idea if a b is like this he said p okay what's the meaning for locus you, you can understand locus as, as, as in the moving line. Okay, this is how I understand the locus. So that means what? You have one mo moving line, he will keep the distance, like, this uh, distance from A is twice the distance from B. So I roughly imagine the moving line is here. So P is actually mo moving over here. P is actually moving on this line. So it's got so many P, P actually can moving, continue on this line. But what P need to do is, he must always make sure the distance from A is a double from distance from B. So that means distance here and here, if this one is X, this one must be 2X. Right? If here is X, if here, is X here have to be 2X. So this is the meaning for locus. But then in this part, actually, no need to understand so deep about the locus. You just need to be able to write out this thing. So he says the distance from A is twice the distance from B. You just need to write out this one. And then you use the distance formula. What's my coordinate A and B first? I need my coordinates. My A will be negative 3, 4. B is 6, negative 2. Negative. Oh, what am I doing? A is negative 3, 4, B is 6, negative 2. I hope I didn't remember wrongly. Let me just double check, 6, negative 2. Yeah. Alright, so then, what is my P? My P is just X, Y. Because I do not know my P. So it asked me to find the equation of locus of P. So I use this formula. So I distance from P, A will equal to 2 distance from P, B. So I will do PA. So I'm going to do something like x plus 3 square uh, plus y minus 4 square. Alright, I just substitute x 
minus negative 3 square y minus 4 square all right this one same pb so we x minus 6 square plus y minus negative 2 is y plus 2 square all right then here's something very important when you want to square root both sides yeah you want to square both sides i mean square both sides you want because you want to cancel the square root right something very important is the two over here have changed to four all right this is something a lot of students will, will just ignore it you cannot show right, cancel square root for both sides without change the two to four then you will got it you will got it wrong so if this is three three square will become nine all right then only this is how we cancel the square root if you got a two here you cannot straight away cancel the square root ignore the two you got it wrong all right then you just expand whatever you have and move it become zero so this is x square plus 6x plus 9 plus y square minus 8y plus 16 so this one will be 4 so this one will be x square minus 12x plus 36 and then just plus y square plus 4y plus 4 now close bracket because I have to expand this one so multiple in, I will got 4x squared minus 48x uh, plus uh, 144 and plus 4y squared plus 16y plus 16. All right, it will equals to this one. So I just copy whatever I have here plus y squared minus 8y plus 16. All right, make here become zero. So I'm going to solve one by one. X square, four x square minus x square. I got three x square. All right. After I done the x square, I will do y square first. Four y square minus y square. I will got plus three y square. All right. Then I go, go back to x. So I move the six x here. So here I got negative forty eight x. So minus four is minus uh, fifty four x. So done. Then I do y. I got sixteen y plus 8y is plus 24y done then I got all this number then I going to like this one plus this one is 160 160 minus 25 minus 25 160 minus 25 is 135 it's not mistaken all right so and you realize all of this number actually can divided by 3 so I'm going to divide 3 and then I, got, I will get the final answer so basically I've got x square plus y square minus uh, 18x plus 8y and plus this one divided by 3 I actually got 45 equals to 0 yes this is equation of the locus okay this is locus equation alright and I see one question over here if for b if the ratio given a b equals to a B ratio A C equal to three ratio two. How to know M and N from it? Yeah, so yeah, for this kind of question, you want to know. I uh, I will suggest you actually just draw it out. So let's let's say I randomly draw it out, and then I got A. A B is three. A C is two. Yeah, maybe A B is here. What happens to my pen here? I I cannot write here. Oh yes okay let me like draw it nicely a bit i don't know why it just doesn't let me delete this okay just okay randomly draw here maybe i need more space so this is a b so you say a b is ratio three and a c is ratio two so i i assume c is somewhere here so a b is three I mean the whole line here is three and this is two so obviously this is one Alright, so what we know is AC ratio CB is just 2 ratio 1. Alright, you, you just need to understand about the question and then you list out. You try to draw it out and, and then after you draw it out, actually you can easily know which one is 2, which one is 1. Alright, I hope, I hope I do uh, do answer your question. Alright, this part, oh, sketch the graph. Alright. Sketch a graph. I have so limited space. Ah, oh, I hate this paper because he got he didn't give me a space to do this. Okay, do I have something like copy and paste? Uh? Let me see. 
I don't think I can like copy and paste over here. You are going to like open a new page. Okay, I just write. So y equal to negative three sine three over two x. Okay, I think I can remember. So y equals to negative three sine three over two x, which is x should be between zero to two pi. Isn't it? it? Ah, uh, where's the question again? Yeah, negative three sine three over two x. Yeah, this is zero. Okay, correct. Okay, all oh, of you can see this page, right? I already changed to the second page. I hope you actually can see it. Can see this e equation, right? Okay, I I guess you all can see. All right, good. Okay, first, you must really understand about <laughs> this part. Because this part is, uh, you really need to understand. The number in front of sign we call it amplitude. Okay, what the am amplitude do is whenever you got three here, that means your highest here will be three, and negative three. If you got this one is ninety nine, mean your highest here will be ninety nine and minus ninety nine. This is what the amplitude do because after you draw the sine graph, this is your maximum and your minimum value. So amplitude actually will will actually will affect the length of this one. So if I change this one to five, this one mean this one will become longer. You become five. This one will go to negative five. Okay, this is what amplitude do. All right. The second thing is the number after sine. This one we call it period. Period will decide you got how many cycle in two pi. All right. So three point. Uh, 3 over 2, you have to understand this is 1.5 cycle in 2 pi, I mean. So that means what? 3 over 2 is 1.5, right? That means 1 cycle and half. Because sine, this is 1 cycle, right? So I got another cycle. This is meaning for like 3 over 2. Alright, if you got 3x, means what? Mean actually in sine, you actually you have 3 cycle. 1, 2, 3. Alright, you see 1 cycle here. Two cycle here, three cycle here. This is what happened in three x. But this three cycle is happened in two pi, right? Because the exam love to like trap you like change this one to pi, and a lot of students will do it wrongly, right? Okay, what's the meaning for negative? The negative mean actually the graph will flip over. So negative mean actually you will start from down, you will start from down and then move up. So actually, you can see those positive area will go to negative. Those negative area will go to positive. Positive area will go back to negative. This is what's the meaning for negative at the front. All right. <laughs> yes, it's just ah, it doesn't matter what the shape look like. So over here, I'm going to like delete er delete everything, but I'm not. Sh oh, this is select. Sorry, I just want to delete all this. Okay, but. Period for sine and cos actually we can find out something. If sine and sine and cos the periods will always equal to two pi. Then we can easily find out what is our one cycle. So this one will equals to two pi. So actually my x means my one cycle will actually equals to two pi multiple two over three. So this one is just four pi over three. That means what? When I got this one is mean. If I have one cycle, it will stop at 4 pi over 3. This is the meaning. So let's say in the exam, you got sine half x. So you got sine half x means what? The half x will equal to 2 pi. That means your x will equal to 4 pi. Means what? The whole cycle will stop at 4 pi. This is the meaning for x. So sine and cos is always equal to 2 pi. This value is fixed already, so you no need to worry. But tangent will equal to pi. Okay, you want to understand you want to understand that more, you can just go to watch my video. I think I make one or two videos about how to sketch the graph. Alright, so if you understand about this one, okay, just now we got the x actually equals to 4 pi over 3. I, over 2, sorry. Hey? 4 pi over 3, sorry. Alright, so I'm going to start to sketch. So, 
I got few few way to to sketch. First is if if I understand this one point five cycle, actually I can draw it very fast. Okay, so this one is x. This one is y. Of course, if I can draw nicer in the paper, but in this sketch board, actually, it's very hard. So I know here actually is stop at four pi over three. Then four pi over three divide by two. What you got? So I do four pi over three multiple half. I got two pi over three. So here will be two pi over three. So actually, I can see they actually plus two pi over three, right? So this one actually is six pi over three. Because what? I because I want to draw until two pi, right? Six pi over three actually is two pi. But how I know this one? Because this one actually is half of this one, half of the whole cycle, right? So I just divide two. After I divide two, I see the pattern: two pi over three plus two pi over three. I will got four pi over three. I will got four pi over three. And I use this one. I plus two pi over three again. Then I will got six pi over three. That means I know, I every half cycle here is two pi over three. Do you see two pi over three plus two pi over three plus two pi over three? This is how we actually write all this. All right. Then you're not yet finished. Alright, so this one I have to divide half again because I know I will get the maximum point. So I, I divide half so two pi over three. I multiply half. I mean divide half. Like I mean divide two. So I simplify. This is pi over three. So I can see this is pi over three, two pi over three. So obviously this is three pi over three. Then four pi over three. This one be five pi over three. Yes. Then I almost done. Of course, I. You, this one is here. This one is here. All right, and then you got a maximum is three. Minimum is negative three. All right, this is ah uh, this is negative three. Okay, of course you should touch the minimum point. You should touch here. Ah, uh, this is so bad. However, this one is not what we want because this is what this is y equals to three sine. Three over two x, but then we got a negative. So what we do is, all will be flip over from the other side. So your actual one is in red color. You you will touch here and then you will touch here and then you stop here. You touch, yes, yes. This is the actual one. So I'm going to erase. Yes, this is what you have. Of course, I I draw and do very bad. Okay, but something I want to mention here is, yeah, you must write the uh, x value correctly. Very yes, and then the amplitude must be correctly, and then your graph shape must be, must be correctly. This is how they give you three mark. All right, so yes, I hope this one actually give you some idea how to draw. Okay, but normally. If let's say in the exam you really do not know how to do, you can actually draw the table and start to plot it yourself. You just draw a big table, and then you put the value for x and y into it. But of course, you must get the idea for this one also. Alright, so you after you got the idea, four pi over three actually you can divide into four pi. Each one is pi over three. Then you can just do two pi over three, three pi over three. And then four pi over three, five pi over three, until six pi over three. Then what you do is you substitute this value into x, and then you find your value one by one. Then only you plot your graph. So let's say you substitute this one into here. You press the calculator. I think calculator will tell you is zero. And then you substitute this value into here. Calculator will tell you is negative three. Then this one is zero, and then this one is positive three. This one is zero. And then, eh, something missing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Uh, zero, negative three, zero. Positive three, zero. Negative three, eh, one. Oh, this pi over three, two, three, four, five, six. Anything I'm missing? Oh, got another one is zero. My bad. Ah, you still need one more. Is zero here. So this is zero. This is negative three. Then this is zero. This is three. This is zero. 
this is 5 pi over 3 is negative 3 this is 0 of course you press the calculator you, you can get all this then after you got all this you then only you plot your coordinate then after you plot all your coordinate, then only you can straight away draw. This is what happened in the exam. You do not know how to read this one. You can actually draw out the table and do it yourself by, by substitute the value into he, into here and solve it one by one. All right. I hope I at least give you some idea, some alternative. I mean, if just in case you do not know how to do, how we get Y. <laughs> All right. Maybe I just doesn't explain good enough. So let me do a demo for you okay so let's say I substitute pi over 3 into here so y will equals to negative 3 sine uh, 3 over 2 and then this is pi over 3 yeah I substitute x equal to pi over 3 into here I simplify this is pi over 2 right so you press your calculator negative 3 sine pi over 2 you press the calculator sine pi over 2 will give you 1 so y equals to negative 3 so you see I got the value of negative 3 here this is how we get the y I hope I do answer your question okay okay we're going to move on okay okay B B is something slightly uh, not to say difficult you have to understand okay over here he asked you to sketch the Schistable graph to find a number of solution that's mean just now you got something like this then now actually you have to draw a maybe straight line or a curve or an anything inside here to find the number of solution number of solution here means intersection point mean the question asks you to find the intersection point how many intersection point let's say the graph is look like this he got one intersection point, two intersection point, three intersection point this one we call three number of solution so answer of number of solution equals three Alright, so, but then no matter you draw straight line or reciprocal graph or curve or anything, you need an equation in y. This is the problem for this one. You don't see any y here, meaning you cannot draw the table. So now you must find a way to like substitute the y into here. So now I know I can, I see the word hangs. I mean, I have to use the answer in the part one to solve this one. So what is my y here? my y will be negative 3 sine 3 over 2x I got 3 sine 3 over 2x but this is not not y why this is not y because this one is positive my y should be negative isn't it so I going I'm going to move this one to the other side make it become negative so you see negative 3 sine 3 over 2x okay now I got y already because this is y do you see this is y so my y will equals to pi over x so after you get this equation as a mx student you must roughly know what is this graph this is x power negative 1 right this one is called reciprocal graph reciprocal graph this is not the linear graph mean this is not the straight line if at the end you draw this one as a straight line you are wrong because straight line should be x power of 1 this one is x power of negative 1 so in reciprocal let's let see the graph will look like this or like this all right this is what happened to reciprocal graph all right so in straight line you just need to find two two or three coordinate but reciprocal graph you at least you need to find four point in order to draw it nicely all right so after i got this equation what i will do is i'm going to draw out this one because it asks you to sketch the system graph so here I've got something okay I will go y equals to pi over x so what I need to do now is I need a table I draw a table here I give it x and y normally I will try to put 0 but in this case I won't put 0 because why y equals to pi over 0 if you press the calculator he will tell you it's max error mean we cannot solve because reciprocal graph will never touch on the y acid you never touch the y acid one so I will start from the first value maybe this one is just the value for x I just randomly choose so I just choose this one maybe then I choose the second one then I just choose uh, this one 
Because I just choose it randomly. And then I just choose the last one, 6 pi over 3. Alright, then, then what? Then what I need to do is, I substitute all this value into here. So it's just y equals to pi over pi over 3. So y will equal to 3. So this is 3. Then I will do the same for the rest. This is pi over 2 pi over 3. This one actually is 3 over 2. So this one is 3 over 2. So y equals to pi over 5 pi over 3. So this one is just 3 over 5. So y, y equals to pi over, uh, this is 2 pi, this is just 2 pi. So this one you have got half. Then you just plot your coordinate. My laptop run out of battery, I'm going to plug in the cable. Wait for a while. Okay, so after you got all this, what you need to do is, okay, you can just plot it. So I'm going to use the blue color just to make it look better. So roughly, so this one is over here. The second one, this is 1.5, right? If you're not sure about what is this value, you just press the calculator. So the second one is just 1.5. This is 3, right? 1.5 is roughly here. This one is, our, this one is uh, 0 point something, 3 over 5 is just 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 is roughly less than 1. So yes, yeah, so I roughly will plot over here, 0 0.6. So this one actually is 0 0.5. So it's somewhere nearer here. So I sketch it, so the graph actually, but because I know the reciprocal graph, so I will start to draw like this. So it will actually connect here to here. Okay, this is what happens to this one. So after you do do this already, it's very important to label it. Alright, same to this one, must label it. Negative 3 sine 3 over 2x. Alright, then you find the number of solution. You have 1 and 2. Therefore, 2 number of solution. That's all. Alright, so you must understand this kind of question. It's not really the super hard question, but yes, a lot of student when they see the equation like this they have no idea how to start so it's very simple your I your idea is like how to let me substitute the y into here so how to substitute y into it so this is what you have to ask yourself so you got you always got the y in the part a already so you must think a way to substitute y into in it because sometimes you have to like multiple 3 by yourself or plus 2 by yourself yes you have to do whatever to get y alright so please do more practice on this part because it gives you 7 marks I think it's quite easy to get alright I'm going to move on now is what's the time now my god yeah we should move faster a bit maybe